Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is, and has been, a humongous title for the past seven years. A vast open world, rich with characters, lands, and quests for the Dragonborn to meet, explore, and complete respectively speaking. But so many years after its launch, which feels to have been a lifetime ago, not everything this game has to offer has been uncovered by everyone. And many of Skyrim's easter eggs, secrets, and references remain unknown to some. So today, we'll be continuing our campaign to inform. That sounds a bit pretentious, as we dive into yet another 10 tiny details you may still have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Not even gonna pretend I know what episode we're on. It's in the 30s. Starting off, Skyrim's bandits are a cruel, evil bunch. Committed to a life of plunder, theft, and murder, they have proven to be quite the menace to society. Alas, with Skyrim's largest armies currently preoccupied in a bit of a civil war with each other, the task of neutralizing these pesky marauders all too often falls upon the Dragonborn. And as you're doing so, you may ever so rarely hear your corrupt foes say the following line of dialogue. Just a scratch. This is, of course, a not-so-subtle reference to a scene in the hilarious film Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where in which the King of England faces off against a foe known as the Black Knight, who utters that line after literally getting his limbs chopped off. I'd love to play the scene itself, but I like being able to afford food and not getting sued by major production companies. So here's a picture. Next on our list, we set our sails for the island of Solstheim, where, just south of High Point Tower, the Dovahkiin can stumble across quite the sight in the distance. A lone chest lay in a pool of blood, with a fresh corpse of a reaver on top of it, and a number of not-so-fresh skeletons all around. Clearly, something fishy is going on. Could this be a setup? Well, as you approach the scene, a handful of ash spawn will rise from the ground. To quote a famous admiral, it's a trap. It would appear these beings have been using the chest to ambush passerbys with quite a high success rate. The chest itself will unfortunately only contain some random loot scaled to your level. Though, thankfully, you can put an end to these Ashmen's evil scheme once and for all. Coming at number three, off of Solstheim's eastern coast, just a short walk away from the Water Stone, lie a pair of small ore boats, just a ways away from a much larger vessel floating in the water. Now, the strange thing here is, these watercraft seem almost entirely abandoned. The closest living organisms that aren't animals nearby are hostile Reichlings, which, you know, I get the feeling these ships don't belong to, and actual bandits. So, what happened here? Did the captain and crew get captured by one of the island's many unfriendly factions? Why didn't these folks just dock at Raven Rock like everyone else? So many questions, so little evidence. Whatever the story here is, only the seas may know. Coming at number four, we head back to the mainland for a quickie. When you enter High Hrothgar, the first plant you'll see is Dragon's Tongue. Get it? Because High Hrothgar is home to the Greybeards, and they have a thing for dragons? I see what you did there, Bethesda. Halfway through at number 5, not even leaving the Greybeard's fortress above the clouds, one inside High Hrothgar, you've probably noticed these banners before. Especially if you've played through the main quest line a bajillion times like myself. The characters on the fabric are in Dragon Tongue. But, did you ever think about what they actually say? Well, there's in reality, only two different banners. It just so happens there's a lot of them. One of these banners says Lock Bow. Lock meaning sky, and frankly, we don't know what bow means. The other banner says Thum Tum. Thum being shout or voice, and Tum also meaning something we don't know. It seems that these banners could be restating a phrase commonly muttered by members of the Greybeards. That being, sky above, voice within. Sky above, voice within. Something you're no doubt familiar with if you've ever exited dialogue with one of these elderly men. Though again, we still don't really know half of the words on these banners, so it's completely possible that we're off, and these banners are saying something totally different. Guess it's another mystery. Sixth. After the Dark Brotherhood questline has been completed, Babette and Nazir, the only assassins to have survived the Falkreath Sanctuary Massacre, oh, by the way, spoiler alert five seconds ago, will be relocated to the Dawnstar Sanctuary, as their old one obviously isn't in the best of conditions. Well, after this has happened, NPCs in Dawnstar will begin commenting on how they've either seen or heard about strange figures entering and leaving the door to the sanctuary. Take a listen. Been lots of people coming and going through that creepy black door. 
And noises. I'd say it sounds like construction, but that's crazy, right? I've heard that shadowy figures are being seen coming in and out of the black door. Gods help us. Next, our seventh spot is a bit of an easter egg that I never really considered, though definitely should have. During the Thieves Guild quest, The Pursuit, the player infiltrates Riftwield Manor, the home of the guild's former, now rogue leader, Mercer Frey, who's fallen into hiding to uncover evidence of his current location. As the player enters Mercer Frey's former office, you'll find that still sitting on his desk is a unique item known as the Bust of the Grey Fox. This is a not-so-subtle at all reference to the guild's past, as long ago it was led by a shadowy figure known as the Grey Fox. However, the Grey Fox was more of a title than a person, and in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, the player would actually assume that role. However, in the centuries since Tez IV, the guild's fallen into decay, and such a position no longer really exists. In fact, it's barely even referenced at all in Skyrim. You could play the entire questline and not even know such a role was a thing. After playing Oblivion, when I first stumbled upon this item, I didn't think much of it. But, all things considered, if you haven't done so before, the significance of this object may be a bit lost on you. You can sell the bust of the Grey Fox to Delvin Mallory, who will give you some coin, but won't really tell you a whole lot about it that you don't already know. So, quite frankly, I'd actually recommend you hold on to it. It'll make quite the collectible in your home. Coming in at number 8, the East March Geysers are a curious place as they are. A strange series of hot springs that have created a graveyard for many an unfortunate mammoth. Well, towards the northern end of this humid stretch of land, the Nerevine, I mean Dovahkiin, can come across two Draugr, lying atop of an ancient table. But don't get too close, as if you do, you'll be ambushed by two nearby necromancers, who no doubt had plans for our skeletal friends. But it gets pretty interesting. Further inspection reveals that underneath the water nearby are even more Draugr bodies and skeletons. And on dry land, there's even a few that have clearly had some considerable human attention. Nearby architecture suggests this was once the site of a Nordic burial ground, and the Draugr collaborate that theory. It would seem as though our necromancer friends were trying to excavate the bodies and resurrect them afterwards. Had they succeeded, they could have very well had an army on their hands. And something tells me they wouldn't use this force for good. Thankfully, however, you get the opportunity to put a wrench in that plan. Getting close to the end here at number 9 is another quickie. But the stars in Sovngarde are actually slowly moving around, almost like they're dancing at all times. It's pretty beautiful. And finally, last on our list, we head out to the snowy lands of the Forgotten Vale. Once a sprawling snow elven metropolis, it is now but the breeding grounds for a number of much less architecturally inclined Falmer. But just outside of the glacial crevice, you can uncover quite the picture indeed. Here in the snows lies the skeleton of a mammoth of all things, next to the skeleton of what was presumably a snow elf. The remains of a mammoth in a place like the Forgotten Vale is quite odd as is. Considering the uneven ground really makes this an inideal habitat for a mammoth to thrive. But it gets even weirder, as inside the mammoth's skeleton, you can find a humanoid skull, likely belonging to another snow elf as well. Suggesting that this four-legged furry beast may have very well indeed consumed an elf for some reason. Now, of course, mammoths are herbivores, i.e. they only eat plants. So either there were some really desperate times going on down here, or something really crazy was happening here. Whatever the case, I'll let you make of this scene whatever you will. But with that, we're going to wrap up yet another 10 tiny details you may still have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Part 33. Which of the ones featured on this list did you personally find to be the most intriguing? And what tiny details, Easter eggs, and secrets do you know of that I get to cover? leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by, everyone, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.